Hey guys, this is Blake from Blake Sanctum, retro site for retro games. Today, I am bringing you something very different. My first ever Let's Play series. And I've chosen something very rare for it. The abandoned, long forgotten and hard to find 4X turn-based strategy game, Legends of Pegasus. Now before we get started, I'd like to quickly discuss a few things about this game and why I've chosen it for my first Let's Play. As my regular followers would know, I like doing videos of rare games and fan projects, so of course I couldn't resist doing this one. Most games that weren't popular still had little cult groups of fans posting guides, strategies and cool little bug uh, fix patches, but not this one. This game was universally disliked by all due to being released way too early and being incomplete and horribly buggy. Due to the savage fan and critic responses, the game was abandoned by its publisher Calypso after only a couple of months resulting in its developer Novacore Studios going bankrupt and then the game being removed off Steam and many refunds being given out to the angry mob. The game has almost been wiped from existence. Pretty much the only way you can get it these days are via old physical copies on eBay which thankfully still work on Steam. Now roughly four or so years ago I didn't know about any of this when I saw a great looking 4x space strategy game for five bucks Australian dollars in a bargain bin at a local game shop and I purchased it. I've always been a huge fan of Master of Orion and specifically 4x space strategy games where you can place buildings on the actual colony surface like in um, uh, Ascendancy and um, Imperium Galactica. So when I saw a new modern game using that same style I couldn't resist. As you can see from the art on my special boxed version here, looks pretty cool. The game comes with a traditional Master of Orion style sandbox skirmish mode for single and multiplayer that sadly doesn't really work due to the uh, useless AI and game ending bugs. But it also comes with a lengthy single player campaign mode that tells an epic but predictable story of an unknown alien invasion destroying Earth and the survivors escaping to another part of the galaxy trying to start over. Things fall apart pretty quick, and before you know it, other alien races are being pulled into a giant human civil war. Exploring alien ruins to find ancient technologies and mastering the game's three playable races are required to get the good guys to victory. From the looks of things, once the civil war storyline finishes at the end of the game, the whole allying the three races against the super aliens that destroyed their homeworld storyline must have been planned for an add-on pack or sequel game that we'll never get. Your foray into these three races start with the humans, of course, whose worlds are recognised by their big oceans and green land masses with sprawling white and grey cities and powerful planetary shields protecting them from invaders. They can build the sta all the standard uh, ship classes we know from the genre, e.g. small corvettes all the way up to ginormous battleships, and you can attach cool modules to the sides of them allowing you to heavily customise the ship's weapons and systems. Next are the machine race Zor, who prefer barren desert worlds which they cover in red and brown circuit board like cities and powerful red shields that are probably my favourite to look at. Their ships are completely different in that the module attachments are the actual ships and you piece them together like jigsaw puzzles to build the ships you want. This even higher level of customization ensures that no two players or ships could ever be alike, which would have been really cool in multiplayer. Lastly are the Arthrox, a completely organic living ship race, sort of like Starcraft Zerg or Star Trek Species 8472, who were broken up into different clans, all serving their telepathic queens. Their worlds are beautiful ocean planets with underwater lily pad looking cities protected by huge green shields. Their living organic ships move and breathe and are sort of like a hybrid of the human and Zor build styles in that you pick a ship class like the humans except most of the ship is still made out of modules like the Zor. They don't seem to have as much equipment space as the other races however their weapons are very powerful which makes up for things nicely. There are also four sub-alien races who you do missions for in the story and you can get different kinds of help from using the game's buggy resource trading screen. The game plays primarily like a standard 4x Master of Orion style turn-based strategy game 
However, when two hostile forces meet, the game changes into a real-time strategy-style Sins of a Solar Empire game, where huge battles can take place involving bases and fleets of ships. Sounds like a great game, right? Well, four years ago I took my $5 game home and googled it and was rather devastated to see what the true story was. It was a complete flop, due to the many game-ending bugs ruining everything. The game's release trailer famously said, Forget your sins, clearly taking a shot at Sins of the Solar Empire, and boy did they regret that, as many fans were very keen to remind them of that line when the game's release was a disaster. Naturally, after seeing all this bad news, I never bothered to install it and try the game out, until now. I had hoped that clever fans would patch the game over time, as it's highly moddable as pretty much everything is in XML files, however there's just nothing out there, and this game is almost forgotten by the world now. So out of curiosity, I decided to try out the game now anyway, to get some material from my new Imperium Galactica series and similar games website, and much to my surprise, thanks to Novacore's final patches, the game is actually pretty playable, and I found it to be not as broken as people had made it sound. I was able to get to the third mission without a single crash or problem, and I looked at other Let's Play videos on YouTube and was surprised to see that no one else had got past mission two. Even the German ones, which is where the game came from, said so you'd have to expect some diehard fans there, but nope. So then and there I decided to do my own Let's Play series and try to find a way around all the bugs and finish this game. If I couldn't finish it, then I would at least take curious fans further than anyone has seen before. Sure enough, I encounter some serious game-ending bugs and hair-pulling problems, but in every case I was able to find a way around them, and I'm pleased to say that I have just completed the game. Yes, really. Being a turn-based strategy game, there's lots of tedious micromanaging and resource grinding, so I've decided to fast-forward through a lot of the boring bits, allowing you guys to see just the action-packed bits, the hints and tips and bug-avoiding strategies, and of course all the story and cutscene elements. If you really want to see something in those boring fast-forwarded bits, just use the YouTube speed controls to slow down those parts of the videos. There are 12 missions in the game, and it's my hope that I'll be able to cover each of them in one to two half-hour videos, making this series 24 30-minute episodes at most. However, I was able to fly through some of the missions later in the game, so I expect the series will be less than 24 episodes once I've cut it all together. So if you're someone who's always been curious about this game, or you were one of the poor fans who bought the game full price and finally want to see what you paid for without all the stress and hassle, or you're, you're going to play the game yourself too and you want tips on how to finish it, then look no further than this series. I'll lastly also point out that my skills get much better as the game progresses, so while in the first few missions you'll see me struggling a bit, much like the other guys doing Let's Plays of this game had due to the game not being very intuitive and lacking a full tutorial, however as I progress you'll start to see me using cool things such as uh, using shortcut keys for all screens and um, the very useful spacebar tactical mode that helps you find waypoints and reduces battle crashes and uh, uh, figuring out how to navigate fleets in the galaxy screen so you don't have to slowly navigate them system by system. Uh, and of course, uh, better ship and planet building strategies. Now finally, before I start things, I better quickly chuck in a disclaimer. Uh, this video series makes the game look better and more stable than it really is, so if you watch this and then go buy the game and hate it, don't come here raging at me because you've been warned about how broken and unpopular it is. So if you're going to get it, get it cheap. Alright, let's do this. Here we go. Let's play. Medic to the bridge. Captain Ramos has been injured in a plasma line explosion. Lead Admiral Drax to the fleet. 
We have just passed through a temporary space-time channel. Relay your ship status report to the Pollux. A wormhole? What's going on? To all ships. Spaceships of unknown design nearing our position at high speed. Take up defensive formations. Commander Daniels, I'm registering increased energy levels from the alien ships. What's the state of our weapons? Weapon systems are working at limited capacity. Take position. Wait for further commands. To all. The ships are activating their weapons. Hold formation. Protect the civilian cruisers. Fire at will as soon as the enemy is within range. Alright, here we go. I'm not going to read these out. If you guys want to read these, just uh, pause the video if I go through it too quickly. But It's basically just explaining how to use the mouse to uh, view the battlefield. Select ships by left clicking. Grab multiple ones with shift, standard RTS controls. Yep, move by right clicking, or attack by right clicking. Yep, no worries. Okay, to start the battle. Here we go. Yes, sir. It's all happening. It's been destroyed. The Pollux has been hit. Life now there's nothing failing. you can do about they the Pollux. They are initiating evacuation. To all. The Pollux has been destroyed. The Helios is assuming command of the fleet. She'll go every time. Um, even if you pause the battle, she'll literally blow up while the game's paused. How can we assist? That's a story of it. Now there's two ways you can battle. You can either let the ship Aye, sit there and then just pull back anyone who gets too badly damaged, or you can charge and uh, focus your fire on the enemy. Both strategies have their merits. Focusing on the enemy, like I am right now, ha has the bad sort of downfall that your tiny crappy ships will literally just charge straight in there and get chewed up. If you, and in these battles there's not too much danger at the start of the game, but later on in the game that becomes a big problem. So you'll probably see me using, slowly shifting over to the other strategy of simply letting my ships, the big ships, sit there at the front, taking the damage, Pulling anyone back. You know, it's, uh, I quite enjoy setting up ambushes and stuff using that strategy. But for now, we're going to have to charge because we need to kill people as quickly as possible. We have destroyed our target. Got him. Turn-based strategy game. You are now in the planning phase of the game turn. And then, yeah, it uh, goes back to real time if you go into the battle mode. To the fleet. We were able to destroy the enemy. Recover the escape capsules and inspect your ships for damage. In the current planning phase, I mean, just click on end turn, which is in the upper right corner. What can we do for you, sir? I'll get everyone back Aye, around sir. the station. Well spotted, sir. On our way. Order acknowledged. Moving out. Looks like no one took any damage. You know, everyone already was damaged, but uh, no one's taken, Sir, so we've done we a good job. Sir, we just taken Admiral Drex on board. Good work, Commander. You've just saved many lives. Unfortunately, we've also incurred heavy casualties. We need a planet where we can evacuate the civilians from the damaged ships and establish our base. Sir, before the wormhole closed or the ships came out of it. Inform the new crews of the situation and assimilate yourself into our fleet. Until further notice, you have command of the fleet, Commander. Understood, Admiral. Ooh, we're in command. Skaros is carrying a colonization module. Gotta send it to a planet. So we need to find a planet. And yeah, it says using the mouse wheel to uh, go out to, uh, to see other things in the system. It's like a zoom control. Sir? So that's the Skaros. You can see the colonization module there. Oh, there we go. We're right near a planet. Hi, sir. So we'll send him to orbit. That sort of highlighted area around the planet, that shows that it's the, the orbit area, and you have to put the ship in that area for it to be able to colonize or do other tasks. Look at this. So this is the system we're in. You can see some a few things around, and this is the planet screen. We haven't got there yet, so we can't do anything, but uh, players of Ascendancy will like that view because it looks just like that old game where you can literally build your individual buildings on the surface. So this is another planet in the system that looks uh, pretty good. So there's decent space to build lots of buildings. Can't see anything else other than this asteroid belt which uh, you can mine later on in the game. 
And that's a gas giant. Can't do much with that other than uh, look at its beauty. Quite satin looking, but without the rings. All right, and uh, as you can Admiral, see, those new ships are located terrible. located a suitable planet. It provides almost ideal conditions for the evacuation. Excellent, Commander. Initiate evacuation to the surface immediately. Our fleet must be combat ready before those aliens re-emerge. See to the repairs and remain in orbit while defending. Understood, sir. Double click. Yeah, so you got to double click on the planet we already did. So we'll do that in a sec to deploy the module. We are ready for orders. So now I'm we're going to need to split the fleet you, because sir? attacks are going to be coming be soon, and they'll attack both the star base and at the planet. So Roger. I'll, uh, just laid in. For a little bit of defense for the Skyros. Construct a building. You go for the building symbol. Drag the icon over an empty space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright. So there's the colony module from the orbiting ship. We've placed it. It's on the upper part of the screen, it'll tell you what's being built, so there it is. We better get some research going. Switch anytime. Yeah. So yeah, you can switch between techs and you won't lose what you've already invested in the tech you're uh, you're stopping. And as you can see, there's lots of different technology fields. So that's the one that gets you your nice ships, and we'll need to look into that pretty soon. You've got your civilian things to get like nice habitats and things so you can get your population up which is very important. Lots of ship systems like defences now will want shields. Shields are very important as you'll see soon the ships without shields are just terrible. Stranger, there's a planet in the background that doesn't quite fit with the game system. Yeah, it's like a big planet up there. <laughs> Informations. Some good English there. Yeah, so that's talking about uh, looking at all the planet stats. We'll that's soon enough. Needs a factory. So yes. Gotta get production going if we can get anything else, otherwise it takes forever to build anything. So there's the factory. Now you want to build a factory on a red cell because that gets... you get bonuses for uh, putting it on the right colour. Blue is science and green is like population kind of buildings. Alright. some reason, I don't know, that cutscene, I think it wipes what you're researching, which is annoying, so I have to reset it. Now, we are ready for order. Some of these cat order ships received. have and repair and modules. Order. Now, people, have, you'll probably see, if you've looked up this game, you'll see people complaining about repair do do modules please, not working, but they actually do, it's Course just they're spotted, just sir. not very intuitive way. at all. And also a ship that has a repair self module and a ship that has a repair others module look exactly the same, except they've actually two different modules that work differently. So, uh, and you can't tell unless you've built the ship yourself. So, I'm not sure which ones of these ships uh, actually repair others, so we'll have to do some experimenting. So, you just click on the skill, click on the ship. It will actually auto repair if you put damaged ships next to it. A ship or station that can repair others, it should auto repair, but sometimes it, I don't know, it doesn't or it's silly. So I'm just going to do it manually here. Yes, sir. I'm pretty sure the two big ships can do Aye, it. Sir. Activating repair module. We'll see how we go. If not, we're going to build a station soon enough. So it's not the end of the world. End of the turn. Another one. Bit of progress. See how the ship moved around? That's a sign that it's been repaired. They sort of almost teleport around the ship that's fixing them. Doesn't seem to be much happening what here, though. Do so you, uh, Order acknowledged. 
Moving out. Sure, Confirm. maybe it is slowly working on one of them. It's hard to tell. Aye, sir. Might just move them around a bit. Sometimes you might need to wake them up. It's a bit buggy, but it does work. We are ready for orders. How can we assist? Construction finished. Factories increasing. Yep, 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 yep. So yeah, we need people that we can tax. Otherwise, the factory is just going to drain away our money because it's an expensive building. And see how there's a little bit of uh, population there? You can see a city popping up in the landmass. I like it how the planets change like that. They, uh, they're they really cool. Later on in the game, I think you like you terraform them and you get to see all this you know, wicked uh, transformations right in front of you. So there we go. A couple of habitats. Uh, they don't benefit from the green stuff, so... Uh... Research has been completed. Alright, let's research that shield. We've got the text we need to get it now. Construction has been completed. Cultural needs. So yeah, as your population rises, you need to keep them happy. So we're going to build that shopping center. Now that one will benefit from a green cell. <laughs> yep, cultural construction science. So I'll put it there. And it'll get a nice little bonus. Twelve turns. Construction finished. Orbital structures. So yes, we've got to build a repair dock. That'll repair our ships uh, a bit quicker. Shipyard repair dock. So you drag it there, and then look at this. You can actually set where in orbit you want to put it. So we're going to put it near our ships so it's adequately protected. There we go. 26, that's going to be a little while, but as the population uh, raises, that'll uh, speed up. Look at this, you can actually watch it being built, which is pretty cool. You actually see it change. See, as I'm ending the turns, it gets a little bit more Research solid. Complete. Right, we've got shields. What do next? Now, I'd like to work my way to uh, frigates, but we probably don't need them in this mission. Shield or Corvettes can probably do the job. And if I recall, we don't need to build any colony ships for this first mission either. Look so at this, there's all these uh, extra cool modules you can add to your ships. And uh, what else could you get down pretty soon? Uh, yeah, look at that, you get your first like military station. They're like starbase things, which are really strong and can protect your planets. They're quite fun to build. Start heading towards those frigates. Construction has been completed. Put your sh damaged ships. We are ready for orders. Dock. Already done. Yes, sir. Yeah, let's grab that guy to repair him. Research complete. for the frigate now. Uh, I think I'll just stick with the Corvette plan. It's cheaper, quicker. Leave it on uh, researching base armor. Although we probably won't even need that either. Uh oh. Here we go guys. Activated real-time mode. They won't be able to reach them. So this is talk. This is about to tell you about warp speed. Yeah. So you can basically warp ships. So you'll see me doing that soon because my flip my fleet is split up. So we're probably going to have to move some of the ships across to help the other half at some point. So I'll uh, I'll show you the warp drive. It's similar to using. You saw me using the repair module. You just you just pick the module. You click it. Or the system, I should say. Module's actually something different. 
Alright, so there's one enemy ship near the planet, which probably means the most of their fleet's attacking the other half of our fleet, so we might need to send some of these guys over to save the other half. Awaiting your order. Alright, so we'll go get you. Order received and understood. Not much point charging in the uh, these guys. They're uh, bloody useless without shields. But, you know, you can sit them behind the shielded ships and they'll lob shots off. So they are kind of useful. Alright, so I'm going to concentrate my fire. Let's go for the uh, the weakest guys Roger. first. Order confirmed. Look at that, pummeling them. Even yes, before sir. I've even Carrying concentrated my fire. Now. Nah, he'll shoot now, look at that. <laughs> target is down, I repeat, Bang. target is down! Ooh, there's two more over there, that's interesting. It's almost like he split the fleet into three different squads. <laughs> Alright, I'm kill this guy, so I'm gonna help the others. We got him. Right, let's get these guys over to help the others. I'm listening. Warp. Now, blue means it won't work. Green means it will work. So there's a minimum distance for the warp drive. You know, that, that stops you from doing uh, the Picard maneuver. <laughs> Trekkies will get that. Waiting for orders. I, sir, carrying out your new orders. We have destroyed our target. Roger. Yes, sir. Carrying out the order now. Always go for the weakest target first. You want to reduce the amount of ships firing on yours as quickly as possible. I repeat, target is so you know, if you target the biggest one first, that means it's going to be you know that's allowing the enemy to hit you with more firepower for longer than the alternative. What are your orders? So we've almost got him. I, sir, carrying out your new orders. Target destroyed. Order acknowledged. Second group who are chewing up the starbase. And don't worry, guys. When you build your own starbases, you can fill them with shields. They is down. And this is the most basic starbase too. You can build massive ones later on. Oh, I've seen pictures and they look so awesome. We are ready for action. I've Affirmative. only been able to mess around in my test games so far. I think I've got up to like level two starbases. Target destroyed. Cool. Or maybe they were just starbase ones that I heavily upgraded. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll see soon enough. We'll get all the good stuff. Right. So we're gonna send these guys back orders? now that they've rescued the others. Not that they really need a rescuing. I was kicking ass. Meanwhile, this, these guys are still getting repaired. This guy, here, sir. I just left him there in the end, I forgot to move him, but nah, didn't really need him in the end. May as well send him up here. Way, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Order confirmed. <clears throat> hey, fully repaired. I'm listening. Course laid in. Course plotted, sir. Yeah, it's kind of a grid that's not Aye, that sir, obvious. Carrying out your new orders. But uh Awaiting your orders. Your Inbound is, for new position. There's overlapping going what on your ships. For you, sir? Sort of plot order courses that are way here. bigger than you expect and you'll be like, what the hell? How's oh oh god, I forgot about this. Um probably should have told it to build something new after the station, shouldn't I? Uh what do I wanna do? Hmm, shall we get some research going? I mean, those colony ships. And then we better start working on more infrastructure. <sighs> Alright. Oh god, not again. Alright. Two this time. That's alright, these, these guys can handle. We are ready for action. Wait, how the station's invisible until you actually activate the battle? It's like, can't see it. Waiting for instructions. Well, the orbital one, anyway. We can see that station just fine. Order received and None understood. of those ships have shields. <laughs> Should be fine, then. There's one out there. That one's got a shield. Attack run complete. Target destroyed. Oh, yeah, target man. destroyed. Look at that. They are absolutely toasting them. Target is down. <laughs> I repeat, target is down. Awesome. See, this is what I'm talking about, guys. Like, they've got no shields, they just charge the enemy. And look at that. His arm is almost gone. It's like he's down to internal systems now, which which they cut through in no time. So it's just 
Bloody useless. I uh, shouldn't have even moved them. I should have just left them behind the cap ships. Awaiting your order. Roger. Roger that. <laughs> We're here, sir. He's flown order so far, he's taken shots at the other battle. <laughs> yes, sir. Carrying out the order now. I, sir, yeah, I hate having to micromanage those ships, so, um, yeah, it's probably just better just to leave target. them firing at distance behind you bigger ships. What can we do, All right. sir? Confirm. Another crisis averted. Give you instructions, sir. We've received a message from the space station. The damage from the wormhole on the fight is too extensive. The station's condition critical. Destruction is imminent. Notify the fleet. We must initiate evacuation immediately. I'm not losing any more people today. Fly the Mykonos to the vicinity of the space station as quickly as possible so the crew can evacuate. So, yep, I've left the, uh, the Mykonos nearby, so that's not a problem. They just. Oh, wow, look at that. Bang. How can we assist? Might just move him just Order in case it needs to be you know, woken up or whatever. And how's things going here? It's coming along. See the cities are getting bigger on the surface. We are ready for orders. Order acknowledged. Moving out. It looks really cool once it gets really big. Right. Stay at the station till the evacuation's over. I'm you know, keep an eye on the top right corner if you're worried that nothing's going on. Uh, that'll tell you. Oh wow, look at that. Bang! She's gone. Now the survivors are safe, use the Mykonos to bring them to your colony. Alright. Yes, sir. All aboard. And everyone over here. Proceeding to position. Well done, Commander. Meet me in the conference room. There are important decisions to be made, and I'd like to have you there. Understood, Admiral. Ooh, he likes us. We're here, sir. Order uh, confirmed. You guys. I'm gonna keep these guys out of the fight. Esteemed attendees, we find ourselves in a precarious situation. The Earth has been overrun by superior alien forces. The wormhole did close behind us, but still, we are not safe here. We may be the only surviving humans. Therefore, we must do everything in our power to protect our new home. Ladies and gentlemen, our situation at the moment is indeed desperate. How are we supposed to provide for these people without political leadership? That's exactly why we have convened here, Minister Keeley to form a transitional government. Aren't we forgetting the enemy ships that greeted us directly following the space jump? We're in a war zone. We need to be focused here. We need our full capacity to act immediately. And you would like to become the new president, if possible. The populace must decide who speaks for them. I agree with you, Madam Minister. Of course, the people should decide who will govern them. Yet at the moment, as Captain Ramos correctly expressed, we lack the time for that, plain and simple. Therefore, we should first form a military council to assume the tasks of governance in the interim. That would Ooh, suit that? me, Admiral. But no matter what we face, we cannot abandon democracy. I agree with Fleet Admiral Drex. As the highest-ranking military officer, I nominate the Admiral as chairman. What do you think, Commander Markov? Due to the current situation, your nomination seems the most sensible to me, Carson. But I think Minister Keeley should be assigned leadership of civilian affairs on the new planet. I agree with that. We have much to do, therefore let us vote on it immediately. Who votes for him stating a military council under the leadership of Fleet Admiral Drex? And who's in favor of granting Minister Keeley responsibility for the interests of the civilian population? Then it's decided. I thank you for the confidence that you have given myself. So that planet myself in the background was a moon, because you can see them there. I will see to it that the threat to our new home from this alien race is eliminated as quickly as possible. The enemy is probably closer than we think. <laughs> yes, they are. But you can't see moons in the game engine. 